Hi, Assalamualaikum guys. We meet again for this week. This week, I would like to introduce you a new chapter which is chapter 5. Uh, so, chapter 5, I will divide it into the three parts. So, we have the part 1 uh, this week, part 2 next week and another week is the part 3. So, next, of course, for the second uh, slide, I would like to in tell you about the learning outcome. So, what does it mean about the learning outcome? Learning outcome is what you got after you done this chapter. First, of course, you should be able to learn about standard, predefined function and discover how to use them in program. Next, uh, you should be able to learn about the user-defined function. So, what does it mean about the user-defined function? So, after you done this chapter, you will uh, differentiate between predefined function and user-defined function. So, next, uh, as a mean value retaining function, including actual and formal parameter. And the last one is explore how to construct and use a value retaining user defined function in our program. So, for today, I would like to introduce you what does it mean about the predefined function and introduction a little bit about the user defined function. Okay, next is modular programming. So, modular programming is the other name of the function. Okay, remember function also known as the modular programming. Okay, next, uh, next let's uh, show you is uh, what is a function. So, what does it mean function in CSC 1 to 8? Function uh, is a sub-program which carry out a specific task. So, remember function, we carry out a specific task. For example, uh, we want to make a sub-program it just focus to find the maximum number only. So, that is the example of the function. So, function also known as the module. Remember, this is the other name of the function. Module or we call it as the modular programming. Okay, next, an approach used to handle complexity in solving problem based on the divide and conquer strategy. So, this is the main point why we need to use the function inside our program. Okay, so we want to divide and conquer to solve the problem. Remember in chapter 1, remember back what does it mean about the programming. Programming is used to solve a problem step by step to use to solve the problem. Okay, for example, we have a larger problem. So, a larger problem that uh, we have is more complex. So, uh, how we can conquer or how we can uh, solve that complex problem. So, we need to broken up into a smaller program. So, when it's become the smaller problem, so it will, uh, it will uh, make that the larger problem. So, the solution to the problem Okay, a module consists of a combination of solution for the smaller problem. So, we known as the sub-module. So, when we talk about the sub-module, it's all about the function. Okay, so as you can see in here, this is what we learned in uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3 and 4. So, chapter 2 is uh, introduction for the programming. Chapter 3 is focused on selection and chapter 4 is the repetition. So, on chapter 3 and chapter 4, all the process will do inside the main. So, main is focus uh, all kind of the process that we need to solve the problem. As you can see in here, it says that this program has one long complex function containing all of the statements necessary to solve a problem. So, in here, we want to find the maximum number. So, uh, in integer main also, we want to find the minimum number. In here also, we want to find the total number of three number and so on. So, all the process, we will put in the main. So, can you imagine if you have 1000 process that you need to uh, use, that you need to uh, put inside the main to solve the problem. So, how many line statement that you have inside the main and when we have a long statement inside the integer main so it can cause integer main executed time more longer okay menjadi lebih lam lambat more slower so how we want to divide it into a specific task that's why function will come in into the programming world so this is 
the example of the program that use the function. So as you can see in here in uh, left side, okay, integer main we process many statement, okay, in one program. But if you apply it and solve the problem using the function, see, integer main just focus on the three statement only. So where are the process? So other process will put into the function. Okay, so for example, this function is focused on maximum number. This function is focused on the minimum number. This function focus on the total, for example. So each function just focus on what they need to do. For example, this function. This function just focus to find the maximum number. So this function no need to think other process. It just focus on how to find the maximum number only. You just put the process to find the maximum number in this function. The example of function in the real world is just like a department. Okay, if you have a one company, okay, one company they have many department, right? So each department they will do their on specific tasks. For example, we have the department of the IT. So they just focus on how to solve IT problem only. So they no need to think how to to what to calculate the the salary and so on. So to calculate the salary, it will pass to the finance department. Uh, that is how uh, function looks like in the real world. So the programmer. Uh, see uh, the concept and they put the concept inside the uh, programming world. So that's why in programming world function is very very important to make our program more uh, faster, execute, easy to read, readability and so on. Okay, this is the definition of the function. Okay, advantages of course uh, when we talk about the uh, function, the first advantages is we can divide and conquer. Um, means that we, uh, we can the manageable program development. A programmer can focus on just that part of the program and control it, divide it and perfect, perfect it. For example, you have a project, right? So, uh, you have the four people in one group. So, you can divide. Each people can focus. For example, uh, this, this function will focus to find the the uh, the total payment okay for the uh, the total payment that customer need to pay for the restaurant for example so another people uh, we focus on the function how to find the uh, famous menu uh, in that restaurant and so on so that is how we can divide and conquer in CSC 128 project so different people can work on the different function simultaneously. So janganlah nanti you focus dekat seorang je. Tak nak. So maksudnya setiap orang ada dia punya specific task dia. Okay. Okay next of course software reusability. Use existing function as building block for the new program. So uh, when we use the uh, function we can call it many times. Okay. We can call it. We can reuse it many Time, as long as you want okay <laughs> so next is advantages avoid code repetition and the last is the enhance the program reliability it reduce the complexity of the function main okay we want to reduce the complexity of the function main so in other words we want to reduce the process inside the function main we want to make the main uh, function more faster to execute that's why we uh, do the function. Okay. So now remember we have a two type of function which is first we have the predefined function and the second one is the user defined function. So what is the difference between this function and this function? So for the predefined function it says that also known as mathematical library function. These functions are available in the C++ standard library such as math.h and others. So remember, when we talk about the predefined function, we want to call the predefined function, we need to put the hashtag include. Okay, this is the uh, an example of the 
predefined function call predefined function usually is um, is defined by the programmer of the your punya uh, dev c++ so programmer di dev c++ prepared a function for you to use if you want to use it okay how about the user defined function so user defined function is the function which are defined defined by the user who is the user the programmer not the programmer of the dev c++ but the programmer that want to build the program the system okay so the function that programmer create for specialized task okay so next okay i want to um uh, explain you more about the predefined function okay introduction it says that predefined or built in function are function used by the programmer in order to speed up program writing for example we want to find the x the power of 2 so we need to use pow so pow is one of the example of the predefined function okay next programmer may use the existing code to perform common tasks without having to rewrite any code what does it mean so as you can see in here pow you see pow but at the back of the pow at the back of this function they have their own code so you uh, as the user for the dev c++ no need to think how to make the power function you just use it because the programmer of the dev c++ prepare it for you okay you just use it okay these functions are predefined by the producer of a compiler c++ and are stored in the header file so dot hash file called libraries okay so in order to for a program to use a predefined function the appropriate library file must be included in the program using hashtag include so remember if you want to call the predefined function you need to use hashtag include for example io stream so this is one of the example of the what of the predefined function okay next rule of predefined function function are access through a function call a function invocation so where you see the function call the function call you can see uh, before integer main okay for example hashtag include io stream if you want to use the math function you need to call the library of the hashtag include math.h so this is the function call okay or we call it a function invocation many c++ predefined function are written value those that don't are called void function okay so what does it mean about written value void function letter i will tell you more about it don't worry okay so remember in the predefined function this is the most common predefined function that you usually use in uh, CSC128. For example, method hash, usually you use the power and square root. Uh, C type, this is for the data type char. So you can use to lower, to upper, is upper, is lower, is digit. Under string.h, you have the strcpy, strcmp, uh, strlan, and str. For the string dot hash, I will tell you uh, in the chapter already. First is the math dot hash header. So this is the hashtag include math dot hash. We want to call the uh, function math dot hash. Okay. So this is one of the functions. Square root is inside the library of the math dot hash. Okay. So this is uh, we want to square root. You know what? Square root. This is uh, the square root. So remember in programming, you can use this symbol. This symbol is just you for the calculus. In coding, you, you need to convert it into the square root. To use the square root function, you need to call the math.hash library. If you don't uh, call the math.hash library, so what happened? You will, you will get the um, syntax error. 
the area will say that uh, they can't find the S SQRTX. You not declare this. Uh, so that is one of the error if you not call the library of the function. Okay, when you use the power, power is for the x the power of 2. Remember, in programming, you can do this one. You need to convert it into this function. Okay, next, the power function. Okay, like I said before. So, this function is just focused to find the, the power of what number. Okay. So, square root. Square root for this one. To convert this symbol into... Uh, this function Okay next we have the C type dot hash Okay C type dot hash header To use this predefined function Your data must in char data type So if you want to use all this This function Your data must be declared in Char data type When we talk about the char data type Is the single alphabet For example A B C So this is the data type of the single so I hope that right now you know how to differentiate between single char and char as a array. Okay, if you use to lower x, says that return the lower case value of x. Okay, if the user, for example, if the user input uh, gender, you ask the user to enter the gender. So user put the uppercase of m. If you use this function, it will display. The lower case of the M So how about to upper To upper If the user input the Lower case of the Data So if you use this function It will become Upper case See It's upper is to, de to determine If a character is upper case It's lower is to determine If a character is lower case It's alpha is one to uh, they need to determine if character is a letter or the number. So, this is its alphabet. Is digit. They want to know the character is digit or alphabet. So, next, this is the uh, one of the example, the coding that uh, apply the C type dot H header. Okay. So, this problem, they want to find the uppercase and lowercase value of letter entered by the user. So, they need to use the 2R upper. As you can see in here. Okay, you need to declare as a single char. Before that, you need to hashtag include C type dot H. Okay, you should uh, call the header before the integer main. Okay, guys. So, remember, if you want to use the C type dot H, you need to declare your variable as a data type single char. Okay, so uh, when you use the single char for the input statement, just use the what? The simple C in. No need to use the C in dot get line. That is the example of the input statement for the array of characters char that have the size. Okay, so they ask the user to enter any character in lowercase, and then they they use the assignment statement which is X. X assignment operator to upper letter I. For example, in here, enter any character in lowercase. If user input the smaller case of the R, so the output is the character in uppercase is it will change it into R in upper case. So if you use the two lower, that means you want to make the upper case become a lower case. Okay, usually this kind of the uh, function uh, will uh, come on in the objective or maybe in the in the structure question. Okay, guys, done with the predefined function. You should remember predefined function is the built-in function that the programmer of Dev C++ prepared for you. You just use it. When you want to use it, you should input the syntax hashtag include library. Okay, now I want to introduce you user defined function. So this is very important because user defined function you need to use it inside your 
project. So user defined function is very important and very famous question in test and also the final test. So what does it mean uh, about the user defined function? First, it says that function design written or defined by a programmer. Who is the programmer? You, because you will create a one program. So you are the programmer. So you need to define yourself what kind of function that you want to use inside your program. Okay, all C++ program must contain at least one function which is main. Main is very important guys. Please don't forget to put an integer main. Even though you have 1000, even though you have 1000 function, you need to put the main. Because of what? Because com compiler akan pergi ke main function, baru dia pergi ke function-function yang awak create sendiri. Next, a function must be called in order to execute the statement contained in its definition. So, remember, even though you declare 1000 function, if you don't call it, tak guna. Tak guna awak ada 1000 function tapi awak tak panggil dia dekat dalam main. Ha, memang membazir. Sesuatu pembaziran. Okay, buat function tapi tak panggil. Buat apa? Okay, tu kena ingat. Next, function must be assigned a name. Similar to variable is function is given a valid identifier. Name, remember the rules of the identifier. So, you need to remember back. So, when we talk about the rules of the identifier name, the name you can uh, start with the number. Okay, same with the function. The name of the function, you uh, can have the space between words. Okay, so you should remember all the rules of the ident identifier name. Okay, similar with the name of the function. A function name must be followed by the parentheses. Okay, this one. After you name the function, for example, find max. Okay, you follow by the parentheses. Okay, uh, next week I will talk more about how to uh, book your user defined function. For this week, I just want to introduce you what is the predefined function and also the user defined function. Okay, so the characteristics of user defined function are Okay, a function name must be unique. Remember, function name must be unique. Means that function name must be represent what the function do. Okay, what the task they do. If the function want to find the maximum number, so you need to name it as the find maximum number. Very easy. Okay, a function perform a specific task. Okay, you need to, uh, to write a function based on the specific task. Please don't combine all the stars in one function. For example, you find the function name is the find maximum. Okay, the, the function name is find maximum number. Of course, if I see the find maximum number, if I see this name of the function, automatically I know what is the specific task this function will process. Okay, so for example, if you want to find the maximum number, one function. If you want to find the minimum function, for example, find minimum num. So, this one, one function. Okay, remember. Setiap function hanya fokus untuk specific task sahaja. Kalau dia nak cari max, max lah. Kalau dia nak cari min, minimum lah. Kalau dia cari total, total. Okay. Please don't combine it into one function. Okay. So, a function is independent and the last one, a function may receive a written value to the calling function. This is very important. Next week, I will uh, talk more about this. I will explain it more about this. Okay, don't worry. So, next, in order to create a user-defined function, this is very important. Please remember, a programmer or you must satisfy three requirements, which is if you want to build the user-defined function, you need to have these three elements of the function. Which is, you must do the function prototype. Next, you must have the function call and you must have the function definition. You must fulfill of these three requirements to, to make sure your function can process. Okay, remember? So, function prototype is the function declaration. Function call Usually, we'll put it inside the integer main. 
and fashion definition usually we put after the close curly braces integer mean so what does it mean about three of these means so don't worry next week i will explain you more about it okay so next user defined function in c++ are classified into two categories so we have the value returning function and void function so first what does it mean about the value returning function means that that function have the return type and return a value of a specific data type using return statement so when you talk about the value returning function means that that function will return something into main it will give something something means that it will give value to the main so next is the void function is the vice versa from the value returning function void function means that function that do not have a return type do not use a return statement to return a value so void function does not have the return statement Okay, value returning function where you see this function actually you you dah pernah jumpa pun value returning function iaitu integer main Okay, inside here you have the return zero Okay, this is the value returning function Okay, void function you tak perlu pun ada return statement ni So, this is general form of program without the function so this is where this is the normal the normal program without the function okay all the process main yang buat okay all the process of the calculation main yang buat however if you study about the function this is how the function looks like so first you have the function prototype okay in integer main you have the function call and after you close the integer main you have the two function okay maybe you have the value returning function or maybe you have the void function so uh, this is the general form of program with only function call and function definition so usually this is how uh your program looks like if you apply the function okay if you have 1000 function you you do one function two function function number three function number four function number five function number six until 1000 function so guys to be continue okay so today classes is just focus on the theory only okay if you have any question guys please ask me in the telegram so uh don't forget to click your attendant in your you future and that's all for this uh and that's all for today classes so we meet again next week. Assalamualaikum.